powered by Pipe TV. Welcome. You are watching On The Move with Miss Tony, where I bring you the story and show ideas that you request. And of course, On The Move today is here with one phenomenal individual, and we are here to celebrate her as an author, a film creator, one that actually I find her to be so brave in telling her story to the world. So. Without any further ado, I'm not going to even say anything more because I'm going to have her introduce herself. Please help me welcome Sids Aki Stevens. Hey, Sids. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on and joining me in on on the move with Miss Tony. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Look, since I've been following you for a little bit, I've been hearing rumors about things and, and I'm like, I can not find out who this sister is, you know, so brave. And I saw, um, I only saw a clip of your movie, which we're going to um, talk about the, the, the short film. But before we even get to that point, I want the um, folks out there to find out who Sid Aki Stevens is. So give us a little bit of background about yourself, like where are you from and whatnot. Well, I was born and raised in South Carolina, and I've been in New York, Bed-Stuy, for the last 30 years. Okay. So I consider myself a New Yorker now. Yes, you are. <laughs> I would think after <laughs> that long, of course. And um, just, just enjoying life and pursuing my hobbies and trying to make it happen. Yeah, well, you're making it happen. I'm telling you right now, things are, are um, moving. I see a lot of um, growth and progress, especially after you've written your book, Own Your Stupidity, which again, we're going to get to in a, in a minute. But before we get there, tell the audience um, definitely how did you get into writing? Were you always a writer? Well, from grammar school, I've mm -hmm. always written. And then when I went to college, I had to write many papers because I was an online student. So ah. I went all the way to my master's degree. Oh, wow. And doing that, I had to write a paper every week. I always loved writing. And one of my friends actually said, it's time for you to write a book. Oh. So I have an aunt that was actually on the Oprah Winfrey show. My family comes from the, um, the book, Slaves in the Family. Oh. So when she went on the show, she said, I'm looking forward to the day where you could tell your story. So I said, what story, auntie? <laughs> what story are you talking about? And she said, I'm looking forward to the day you tell what it's like being a fatherless daughter. Wow. Did you ever like think about that ever until she made mention of that? Made that statement? I, I paid my aunt no mind. Right. But I was going through a depression. And at some point when I spoke with my minister, he suggested that I do a journal. And when I spoke to him, I found great joy in writing my journal. And he was, uh, he passed away, but he also was a writer and he did that for a profession. So he encouraged me to do it. So I was around a lot of people right. who were telling great stories and encouraging me to just let it out. Right. So here you are now writing in your journal, just about 
things that's on your mind. Again, you said you were going through depression. Um, I've always thought about writing down your feelings helps to release it, especially when you don't have people around that you can speak with. So um, writing down definitely probably helped you a lot. But how did you know now these writings that you're putting together had to go into a book? Why you decide to go that way? Well, I decided because I knew being a mother myself, I wanted to encourage young people. And young people uh, needs to hear your personal experience. Mm -hmm. So as I'm writing the book, I'm just taking little notes, writing about 20 minutes a day for my commute from Bedside to work downtown Brooklyn. Okay. And, and just collecting my thoughts. But I realized I didn't want to do a pity story. Nobody wants to hear someone just drown in their sorrow. Mm. So it was time for me to tell my story, but also enlighten people. What could we learn from it? Learn that? from it, yes, yes. So here you are now, have this book called Own Your Stupidity. How did you come with that title? Actually, <laughs> I was at work and one of my coworkers irritated me. So I said to her, own it, stupid. And I said, hey, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> and as I was writing the journal, I decided to say, own your stupidity. And that's how I came up with it. Wow, wow. So really brief, tell us a little bit more about what this book is about when, you know, for us to get this book. Well, my book is actually my story with being a fatherless daughter mm -hmm. and the things that I had to go through with him being absent. My father is still alive, but we don't have a relationship. Oh, and it okay. wasn't until I lost my son to sudden infant death syndrome, mm -hmm. I learned that I had to take my time to forgive him regardless of how he treated me. Right. So my journey, once I lost my son, to really make changes in my life and be more forgiven and let things go. So on your stupidity, it's about you coming to the conclusion that you can't change other people. You can only change your attitude and how you deal with people. Yes. And actually how you react to others as well. You yeah. know, that's the whole thing. How do you react? How do you um, uh, take on that? Well, definitely when we come back, we're going to dig in a little bit deeper into Own Your Stupidity, the short film, because that book went into making a film. So, I mean, what, again, Sids, when we come back, you're going to tell us how that came about because I'm, that's very interesting to me. All right. Thank you. So guys, stay tuned and we'll be right back with Sids, Aki Stevens and Own Your Stupidity. U.S. Department of Census. Nearly 20 million children live in single parent homes. 43% live without their fathers. Oh my, it's a girl. It's a girl. Your father was not there for you when you was born in the South. He not gonna be there for you now, even if you do look like the spitter image of him. My sister had to raise this child all by herself without your help. Huh, damn, but you should answer her question. Oh, look at her. She's having such a good time playing with her cousin. What she needs is a good switch on her behind. She needs love and attention. Hmm. She's the golden child, you know. Golden? You got so much clothes, you do not need that sweater. My mother gave me this sweater and it means something to me. I do not care about your mother and at least I got a father that support me. You talk about him all the time, he ain't even shown to your game. The critics say a must-see film. From the author, Sid Akai Stevens, Own Your Stupidity.
Hey, and welcome back. Again, I have Sid's Aki Stevens with me via Zoom. She's coming straight from Brooklyn. <laughs> All right. So, Sid, when we last left, um, we talked about your, your book, Own Your Stupidity, and how it was turned into a film. But as you had mentioned also, you lost your son to SIDS. So first of all, what's the name of your son? My son name was Kyle. Kyle, Kyle, beautiful Kyle. Well, look, tell us how, um, educate us folks that um, are not familiar with SIDS, what SIDS really is. Well, SIDS is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. And basically what it is, is when a child stop breathing. There's no contributing factors of the death. It's just that the child stopped breathing. And they have done many studies to find out what could be a, a way to determine what causes SIDS. And they have not come to the proper conclusion. You take, for example, what happened to me, everything was ruled out but it still is called SIDS. I'm not a smoker. My son died during the summer. Mm -hmm. So the heat wasn't on. Right. He didn't have any blankets and he was lying on his back. So he did not suffocate from lying on his stomach. Right. So wow. I had to come to the conclusion and accept what the term is, but I never got the closure that I really needed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that closure is now that you need? Well, well, I come to realize with having my faith that he just came for a short period of time, but he made a difference during that short period. Yeah. My son lived for 120 days. Wow. And he changed me in so many ways. And now I'm growing as a person and I'm being more compassionate. It wasn't like I wasn't before, but I had less patience with people. So now I'm learning to let go of things and understand that. What's important. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, Sids, I'm listening to um, your inflections in your voice as you speak of Kyle and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak the way I think others may be asking a question. How long ago did he pass? And this was over 19 years ago now. Yes. Yes. And you talk about making an impact. I always say, and I'm a true and big believer about people coming to your reason for a season at, or a lifetime, you know, or a reason. And here, Kyle has definitely made an impact. He will always be remembered. Um, one, again, through your book, through your book. Your book is about your life story and part of his, part of that, of him is in that book. What made you turn that book into a short film? Well, I was approached by um, two ladies, Cherie and Rhonda Washington. Okay. Uh, we connected um, productions. And they asked me, would I like to adapt it to a film? Cherie and Rhonda are my first cousins. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to do a family project. But it was important to me to let the message be delivered in my vision. So after a while, there was a conflict with the direction of the film. So I mm -hmm. brought them out and took ownership of the project right and i was able to tell the story in my own words and in my vision i'm really proud of that yeah when when was the film released film was released in 2018 mm -hmm. and it was in the film festival for two years right. and now i'm working on um, doing downloads and websites to put it out there because um, after a while, it's time to move on and do something else. Yes, build it, build it, definitely. And and that's um, why, again, I'm, I, I want you to have this platform here on, on, on the Move With Miss Tony 
because your this this short film was phenomenal. You know, like I said, I, I saw just the, the preview of it, but just seeing that I'm like, I can't wait to have a moment to, to watch the whole thing. And, you know, here you are getting ready to build and you want to expand it more. So I know you um, you have some challenges or you have maybe even fundraisers and things like that that um, will help bring light to that. Can you ex um, talk a little bit about that? Well, part two of the story is actually the SIDS. So I want to focus more on that. So what I did was reach out to some other parents who lost their uh, child to SIDS and they would like to tell the story. So we came up with a project to do the story in their own words and let them be interviewed about their experience. But of course, uh, takes money yeah. to come up with the project. I was able to get a team, but um, raising money while we quarantine and staying at home, just finding different ways to entertain people for a small amount of money and also do uh, my popcorn drive, which has been amazing. Mm -hmm. I raised a lot of funds with double good popcorn. Okay. And people have been enjoying it because it's 14 different flavors of gourmet popcorn. Mm -hmm. So it's been really nice to get the support and have people dedicated to all the different events that we're doing. Right. So um, again, so some of the challenges that you are facing is just trying to finance because you, uh, you talk about um, trying to expand the project. So basically you're trying to put together a documentary, am I correct? Yes. Yeah, so a whole documentary. So that takes time, guys. It takes time to put together a documentary, gathering the people. How are you with, um, uh, getting folks to wanting to tell their story just like you did. How are you doing? Social that? media is the key. I've reached out, I've joined some SIDS support groups, and we're able to find people throughout the country who are willing to tell this story. And some of them, they don't want anything from me. They feel that passionate. They just would like an opportunity to, to be, tell their story, to be heard. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, sis, we're not done with you. When we come back, we're gonna find out what's gonna happen now in your future, what's coming um, down the pipeline. All right, so guys, stay tuned. When we be back, we'll, sit, we'll talk more with some sis, okay? Miss Tony, Tony, Tony's on the move again. Welcome back. This is On The Move with Miss Tony. I'm your host, Miss Tony. We are back with Sids Ake Stevens um, talking with us and sharing her um, inspiration of her braveness um, with, the, with her book, Own Your Stupidity. And of course, it was made into a short film, which is absolutely phenomenal. But Sids, this last portion of our um, show here, I want it to be all about you. Okay, I want to hear all about you. I want to hear what you have going on for the rest of 2021. Because you know definitely what happened in 2020, a lot of things stopped. But for me, you know, even though we were going through a lot of stuff last year, I found, I, I see this year as a time to reset, push that reset button, start over, you know, get your mindset in the right place. So what is going to happen with you 2021? 2021, I hope to get this documentary completed. You will. I will. How do I hope? You will. Yeah, I will. <laughs> and I'm doing different events. Uh, the name of my company is called Marvelous Mom Productions, LLC. So I'm hosting different events on Eventbrite. Just look it up. I have different themes. I have poetry night. I have Calypso night. I have Spanish night. And I also have an amateur night where we have a talent show. Wow. So it's a cash prize and rewards for entering and winning, of course. Wow. Wow. Okay. And, and everything and is virtual, right? You said? 
everything's virtual. So all you got to do is look up Marvelous Mom Productions LLC through Eventbrite and all the events will come up and you buy your ticket and then we send you the Zoom in the detail, the Zoom information in the details. Right. right. Also, I'm still doing my popcorn drive. So today at um, 5.30, a popcorn drive was, uh, was created and it ends at Monday at 5.30. So it's okay. a four day virtual pop-up. So look up, um, I'll be posting my link to my Facebook page. Good. So it, it will be there if anyone wants to purchase um, popcorn, 50% of the proceeds will go towards the documentary. And what's involved with the documentary? I'm not trying to make um, a profit for myself. I'm trying to comfort other people. When you think about SIDS, I lost my child 19 years ago. Still stinks. But can you imagine someone who just lost their child last month? Right. So it's important that we get this message out. And what we're trying to do is just raise enough money to pay the crew who are willing to do it at a reduced price. Right. But also have the families commute and mm -hmm. cover their expense and their hotel stays. Right. So that's really what everything is about. Just mm -hmm. trying to get everybody comfortable and be able to tell their story. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, look, Sid, is there um, anyone in particular you would want to work with? Well, I like to work with the same crew that I had from before for the short film. I worked with a gentleman named Rodney Skipper. Mm -hmm. uh, he helped me so much with different things, but also I'm looking for Lamar Orwell. I would like to have him on my story or his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have someone who's well known. Right. He lost the child to SIDS. Mm -hmm. and his uh, first wife lost the child to SIDS. Right. You ever try um, reaching out to him? I try through social media. I try to reach out to Liz and I mm -hmm. was able to get a response. So if anybody listening have yeah. a personal relationship with them, it would be nice to speak with someone in the industry who have experienced that loss so that we can bring better awareness. Absolutely. It's always good. I mean, I always say it's not always necessary, but it, it is actually fantastic if we can get some a personality to be on such platforms as this because it opens up the networking of um, other people to hear and watch what's going on, you know? Um, Sids, I appreciate you so much. You're doing phenomenal. On the Movement, Miss Tony is always here definitely to help support you in any way, you know, utilizing our platform. We're coming out at certain events, you know, and I'm um, speaking up on it, you know, advertising it. Um, if people wanted to follow you, give them your social media. Um, on Facebook, I'm Sids, S-I-D-S, I-K-A-I, A-H-K-Y, Stevens, S-T-E-V-E-N-S. And um, on Instagram, I'm Sids, I-K-A-I, that's S-I-D-S, A-H-K-Y-S, only. And on Twitter, Sids, i k i S-I-D-S A-H-K-Y. And of course, the old fashioned way. You can always email me. <laughs> Sids Ikai Stevens at gmail.com. Okay. S-I-D-S A-H-K-Y S-T-E-V-E-N-S at Gmail. 
Okay, guys, don't worry. If you didn't have a pen or paper to write down all that information, we will have it at the end of the show. And reach out to her. You know, whether um, it's just to help support or to help network, you know, everyone could always use some help, especially, you know, this is a very important topic. Um, you won't believe how many people are actually affected in a family um, by SIDS. Um, it's, it's something that's not talked about often. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's, it hurts the whole family, you know, just not the individual. The whole family gets affected by it. But um, Sids, thank you again for stopping through and sharing um, your story with us, telling us and educating us a little bit more about Sids. Again, we are here to definitely help support you. So keep um, telling us when um, these different events are so we can help promote that. Okay, and um, that's it. I mean, is there any last words of wisdom you wanna give? Well, just keep in mind how important Sids is it's the third cause of death among infants. So it's very important that if you don't know it, it's okay. I think that when I had my loss, I wasn't familiar with it prior to having that loss. So I just want people to understand and not place the blame on anyone. Mm. Just something that happened. And hopefully we can do more research and reach out to our congressmen yes. to let them know the changes that we need. We need more changes with the police department, with how they go about investigating. We need more changes with ACS, with how they investigate. And we need more changes with the medical examiners, many parents are not having a closure because they don't even have the possession that of their children belongings. So it's important that we make changes by letting people know that this is affecting our community. Right. Wow. Um, Sids, thank you for sharing that with us. And of course, your little angel Kyle is looking down on every single move you're making. He, he is very proud of mama. You know, I'm proud of you as well. Thank you. Thing. Yes. Well, look, guys, I want to thank you again for stopping through, SIDS. I want to thank my viewers for um, staying with us today and um, experiencing this story together. As always, I want you to be well, be safe. And I'll see you again next week on another episode of On the Move with Miss Tony. Talk to you later.